first off, we just like to say thank you for everybody for showing up, uh, sticking it out for the whole uh, program, just watching everybody's presentations that we all worked really hard on. And we can just get straight into it. Okay, so just like what Dr. Fletcher said about my project, so we'll just see what different pharmaceuticals are in our waterways, how they get there, and how we can combat this problem is basically what I'm researching this whole summer. And just different literature reviews and searching through different dissertations on information about this topic um, is basically how I went about my whole presentation. So the, fir the first um, article that I found was the Tampa Bay Times, published in 2022. And it quotes a recent Florida International University study identified 58 different drugs in a bonefish from South Florida's coastal waters. And a single fish has 16 drugs in its system. So if you look closely at the list on, I think, yeah, that's the last slide. Um, you can see exactly what drugs were found in this fish. So things like antidepressants, um, heart medications, schizophrenia medications, topical creams that you wouldn't think would get, find their ways into our water system, opioids, antipsychotics, just different things like that. So it kind of puts a perspective on what was found in our waters and how they're affecting our wildlife as well. So just a little bit more background on our problem. So different things like opioids, ibuprofen, even birth controls have been detected at significant amounts in our waterways, which is causing this issue to get a lot of attention. And the findings of what contaminants are in the water can help us better learn how they're affecting our wildlife as well. So the different chemicals get into our waterways from different processes, things that we do every day, day to day, not really thinking of how these things are impacting our environment, things like flushing our toilets, showers, runoff from groundwater, and also from our landfills. So when we um, dispose of these pharmaceuticals, they're not properly disposed of, so they leak into our surrounding waters as well. So from the literature reviews that I was conducting during this project, uh, these were articles and dissertations from different bodies of water and testing different subjects. So a paper from the India Road Lagoon, uh, Florida Tampa Bay area, and other United States studies. So from St. Cloud State University in Minnesota, they were studying bluegill sunfish and the fathead minnow. Uh, the pharmaceuticals looked at during the data collection were things like muscle relaxants, behavior modifying drugs, ibuprofen, and of course, opioids. So just some project objectives. Uh, the main project objective for me was identifying main pharmaceuticals that are making their way into the local waters and getting a better understanding of how pharmaceuticals that come from humans can affect our water race and of course our wildlife. Um, of course, identifying potential health risks to humans and identifying solutions to combat this problem as well. So just a summary of my findings. So pharmaceuticals to watch out for. So we have a list from Florida and of course the whole United States in general. So in Florida waters, there are pharmaceuticals that are found like painkillers, caffeine, uh, medicines to treat dementia, Alzheimer's, anti-inflammatory drugs, um, things to treat pain from instant bites, minor cuts, um, antidepressants, OCD, PTSD medications, anxiety disorder medications, and even things that treat and prevent heartburn as well. And for the entire United States, that list includes everything I previously mentioned and more, of course. So a total of 93 pharmaceuticals have been reported and to, occur, to occur in the surface water of the United States. So that includes everything I listed and things like cancer medications, different antibiotics, um, caffeine, and of course, over-the-counter pain medications. So some ecological impacts that this problem can have are impacts on wildlife, of course, so behavioral changes and health risk of aquatic mammals specifically, and these having long-term effects as well. So, Another ecological impact will be bioaccumulation. So the amount of chemicals inside the tissue of the organism increases through the food chain. So the top predators would have the highest concentration of these chemicals. And of course, the effects of our water quality over time. 
So for the first case study that I studied was the dolphin case study that tested antibiotics and antibiotic resistant organisms. So the different natural bacteria, they are exposed to these antibiotics from waste that were previously mentioned. So things like human waste, the groundwater, things of that nature. And when bottlenose dolphins become stressed or injured in any type of way, they are exposed to these different antibiotics that affect their immune systems and their overall health as well. So the data collected in this case study was what bacteria and what pharmaceuticals they were resistant to. And this was collected when dolphins were caught in the Indian River Lagoon and samples were collected from global gastric, gastric fluids and feces samples from each, each dolphin. And they were tested for different bacteria, fungal culture, and as well as antibiotic sensitivity testing. So each, by, each bacteria was identified and isolated in an antibiotic resistant strain. So the two lists that we have on the screen right now are the chemicals that bac that bacteria tested resistant to. So these were different antibiotics that came in many different forms. So pill forms, injections, and also topical creams. And the second list that we have is the different bacteria that tested to be antibiotic resistant. So the second study that I found was the bluegill sunfish case study, and this was testing the effects that pharmaceuticals have on bluegill sunfish from their younger stages of life to their adult life as well. So they, in this study, they tested different drugs that have different significance to humans, and they kind of predicted how these would affect marine life as well. So it was things like anti-inflammatory drugs, um, muscle grade relaxants, behavior modifying drugs that were sleep aids as well and also treating different diseases that included stroke growth. So, oh, sorry, it's okay. Um, some potential effects on marine life were um, altering developmental and reproductive cycles, their feeding efficiency and their feeding patterns as well. Their feeding efficiency and their feeding patterns as well, and also the avoidance behavior in the fish. So for this case study, I um, put together two visuals that can show the two different tests that they did for these uh, test subjects. So they did a predatory avoidance testing and feed, feeding rate testing as well. So for predatory avoidance, they used glass containers to separate each test subject and let them test to fit the acclimated so water conditions while they used an artificial predator stimulator. So they would conduct, um, they would test, they would collect their data by comparing how the test subject was reacting to the artificial predator stimulator. And for the feeding rate testing, they uh, separated the test subject as well um, the night before testing so they could get acclimated to the water and so that they could fast the night before as well. The next day, the test subject was given one minute to eat. They counted out exactly how many brine shrimp were given to this test subject and it was 20 to 35. And what was left was going to be counted and used as percentage of consumption. So overall from this case study, they found that exposure to these different pharmaceuticals impacted the feeding efficiency of these test subjects and also the red blood cell count as well. So this study was a little bit of a stepping stone just to see more in-depth um, evaluation of, pharmace of pharmaceuticals and contaminants in the future. Um, some human impacts that this problem may have are direct and indirect. So some direct impacts would be from eating the fish directly in our waters contaminated. This can cause long-standing problems that we are not aware of as of this moment. And also from our drinking water, if the pharmaceuticals can find their ways into rivers, streams, and lakes that are affecting our fish, how come it isn't affecting us that we know of? Indirectly impacts are contamination in the wildlife, changing our ecosystem and ecosystem services that the ecosystem provides, things like our tourist attractions, like fishing, our property value, and small businesses in the local area as well. So some solutions that we can use to work towards solving this problem. Um, 
different community partners, so ORCA, or Ocean Research and Conservation Association, they work with community partners that work towards restoration of the Indian Grove Lagoon and the surrounding water. So right now they're working on a project that tests different fish for microplastics. Also the St. John's Water Management District, they work on septic tank conversion to sewer systems. So converting these old and broken septic tanks in our community to work in sewer systems, that can stop the direct um, leakage of pharmaceuticals into the groundwater. And also, Florida Department of Health pharmaceutical disposal kits should be introduced to the community in all aspects as well. So data missing that could be proposed for new projects in the future are testing fish for different pharmaceuticals using blood to ensure that that can also cause a financial limitation and testing local water. So also more research on the effects of pharmaceuticals to our water quality and even smaller organisms like plankton and organisms at the microscopic level, which is the starting point of bioaccumulation and biomagnification as the chemicals go up the food chain. So, and also the turnaround data for the disposal kits, are they being, are people having access to these disposal kits? Are they being disposed of properly? Um, are directions clear on these disposal kits? Just information like that that can help us better influence our community. And uh, future work. So this project can influence the use of disposal kits all around the country. Disposal kits are just what they sound like, kits that allow you to dispose of any leftover medication that you may have. And for the future, this project should be an example as to why these kits should be accessible to people in the public um, anywhere at any time, like pharmacies, gas stations, and even supermarkets. So, throughout my experience as a student in the WISE program, I have learned many things, both educational, but also on the professionalism aspect. Uh, while making this program fun and enjoyable for me, meeting new people, making new friends along the way, I was given the chance to research a project that brought much interest to me and a problem where my input could find changes to policies, our ecosystem, and sooner or later, the country. And my acknowledgments. A big thank you to my mentor, Dr. Sarah Crutchy, and my other mentors that we partnered with in the WinHP uh, program, Dr. Wilson Howard, and everyone sitting here today, all of the RISE professors and the students. Seeing everybody's presentation, you guys really push, we all push each other just to strive for the best. So Just uh, reiterate the need for publishing because you have enough there to publish something. So I would encourage you to continue that and to find any uh, journal that would be interested in publishing those results. So I think it would be a good idea that while you study that you come out of here as a published author as well. Waste waters and waterways were actually coming from us. I think most.
closely in my presentation why I focus on proper disposal, which just because that could be just a starting step of how the issue can be handled, um, and just also a way that we can grasp on this issue, like in a simpler way, I would think. Like these are just the starting steps of how we can handle this issue. But I also that does make a really good point, and that would be like further research. Thank you. 